What's up, everybody? It's another episode of Better Than Static. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, um, Tyler, and tonight I got with me Lucas and Chris. And yeah, and Chris. Um, guys, how have your weeks been so far? Like we're recording on a Thursday, but I mean, still, how they been? It's been very long. It's been what about you, Chris? Boring for me. My week's been a little rough. I've had a lot of tech problems this week, and it's not like. It's not like stuff I couldn't fix, but it's stuff that aggravated me really bad. Like, the printer at work, it wouldn't print right, and I, I had to try printing three different times, and it was a whole kerfuffle. And then today, in my program that I designed stuff in, I forgot to click one little checkbox, and uh, the thing didn't work. So finally, I figured out that I had to check that checkbox, and it worked. So my technology problems are... Hopefully, hopefully tomorrow is a good day for my technology problems. Um, Tech problems have made but, my week long. That has been the cause of that. Man, and like, tech problems are also some sometimes the reason like these things take forever or like when we have to re-record and stuff like that. Tech problems are just always there and they always suck. But, this week was bright because me and Lucas just got um, to like the final number, team number two of... Uh, a fortnight right before we recorded it was it was so lit it was awesome it was me you our friend jeff and luke who we we both mentioned before in the podcast i think and we had this awesome fort we're like all right we're set up just keep looking for people and then our whole fort gets blown up and we have to do just guns a blazing and it was the adrenaline was there for me i don't know about you lucas yeah it was pretty awesome Um, another thing that has gotten my adrenaline up and going was the movie 12 Strong, the new Chris Hemsworth movie, that war movie. It was, it's about, um, the platoon or what, like the, the squad that went to Afghanistan right after the Twin Towers and, uh, they tried to get, so not, no, who did they try to get? Dang it. It wasn't, was it Bin Laden, I guess? But anyways. That movie is really good, and like for me, like, do you all watch a lot of war movies? No, uh, like a lot, but I have seen a lot of them over my years. Has there ever been a bad war movie, in your opinion? Uh, I'm sure there have been bad war movies, but like, I mean, there's but like the ones that you have chosen to watch were they bad? Oh. Um, so I've not had that either. I'm sure. I'm sure there have been, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Like I, I think, and this is going to get sound not sound really patriotic, but like directors of war movies, they must really love America because they paint like even in like the awful situations, they paint us off to be awesome in there to save the day, which is I which I love because like. Uh, not... It's always good to have that pump up. Not oh, always. Ones I've watched. Which ones have you watched where they have it? Um, well, for one, Wind Talkers. Uh, I know in the grand scheme of things, like, yeah, we come in and save the day and do all that, but throughout the movie, there's a very big struggle between, like, them killing the Native Americans just to keep, like, our secrets and stuff like that, and it kind of shines it and it's like a bad light kind of thing it's a very good movie uh i enjoy it i haven't seen that in a long time it's yeah. probably been it's probably been like since high school since i watched that one but my opinion 12 strong is really good you should definitely go see it i it's probably one of my favorite chris hemsworth movies granted there's not a lot that i like he does a good job as thor for a marvel movie but like and Red Dawn, I guess he was okay when he did the remake of Red Dawn. I mean, but, there was a lot of problems with that movie, but he was not one of them, is yeah. what I'm kind of getting at. Uh, but, like, in this one, he he did a really good job at, at being a serious role. Um, also, who's the guy that played Zod? 
uh, General Zod. He was in a. Uh, he's an Ice Man. Yeah, I don't. I don't know his real name. But like exactly he was, he did a really about. good job too. Yeah, I I can never remember that guy's name. Um, uh, Michael, Shannon. Michael Shannon. He looks like yeah, Michael Shannon. What is his name? Michael Shannon. Yeah, it just clicked in my he brain. He looks like a. He looks like he should always be a villain in a movie, but he was actually a really like he was a good guy and twelve strong. He just has like a grimace on his face. It's like that you know I mean? dude like, with the scar on his face. Uh, that was in I think he was in Gladiator. Oh crap! Uh, what the guy that played the Caesar? Uh, Joaquin Phoenix? No, not Joaquin Phoenix. Uh. Well, I know he was in uh, Peaky Blinders for. Oh, uh, was he also the was he also the Scarecrow? No, Is not Cillian Murphy. He's not like the main person. He plays one of the side dudes. Uh, Is he a main person in Gladiator? I think so. Hold on, I'm looking it up. But like, like those people, just you, you see them and you're like. That's a that's a rough dude. He's probably cannot play somebody that is that is nice and uh he did. Are you talking about Jim uh Jimon Hounsu? No, Sounds Tommy like Flanagan that? is his that, name. Yep. What else is he in? I've never I've I, that name I've seen him and stuff uh, all the time, but it's never in like a main role or anything like that. But I always he's in thought Sons he was of Anarchy. Cool. Gladiator, Braveheart, When a Stranger Calls, Alien vs. Predator, and Face Off. Cool. He does have a pretty good lineup of movies he's been in. Yeah. Also, something that I figured out when I went to watch 12 Strong is that our movie theater in, like that I go to does not get a lot of good movies. Like, We're not getting Hostiles till late. We're not getting Darkest Hour till late. And it's really frustrating. Like, They don't even tell you when they're coming. Like... You should at least have an idea that way I can decide if I'm going to go somewhere else to watch it or if I'll wait to watch it in that theater. Like, I, I wish they would have got Shape of Water and, like, so many yeah. other movies. I mean, Shape of Water... You're going to say something. Shape of Water, was, I don't feel like it would do very good in... Uh, Southeastern Kentucky? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What are, you trying, what are you trying to say, Lucas? We're not very tolerant in Southeastern Kentucky? Yeah. <laughs> About that. <laughs> oh, gosh. We're I still, super tolerant. I haven't, I haven't seen Shape of Water. I really want to, but I just I never went and watched it. I definitely next, do want to watch Shape of Water. Yeah, next movie I go to the movie theaters for is probably going to be uh, Ready Player One. So, I'm definitely going to watch that. Me off. and Greg actually, on a calendar, we we put all the movies that we want to see. That way we know like when to go watch them. Like this Friday, uh, the new Maze Runner comes out, and we're going to watch it Saturday. Um, so Chris, if you want to come to that, you'll be in town. Uh, you're more than welcome to come with that. But I, have you seen the first two Maze Runners, Chris? Not even remotely interested. Uh, I was going to see if you wanted to come to the third one with me and Greg. Nah. I, I don't know. I I end up talking about like that. I love going to the movies. I also love buying movies. My Amazon wish list is packed full of movies I'm gonna buy eventually. But to get away from, uh, let's let's go from uh, movies to video games. Have you guys heard about the Nintendo uh, Labo thing? I think it's kind of stupid. Nope. It's like a cardboard frame you can put your Switch in. Okay, I've like seen just, this, but I didn't know what it was. So it just... It's like... You can make things that hold your Switch to where you can, like, control it differently and make it easier for games or something. I don't... Like, say you're playing a boxing game, you could make, like, cardboard gloves to go over your hands that hold the Joy-Cons or whatever. Or, like... I don't know. It's 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 really dumb because you could just do it with a cardboard box, but uh, I don't like. I think kids will like it. I think Nintendo is marketing towards the kid audience. I don't think any adult that plays Switch would want it. 
But like I don't I think the price is too high. I think it's like sixty bucks for like a cardboard pack that you can like you can build stuff with. Like if I was a parent, I would not pay sixty bucks for cardboard. I'd like go out behind save a lot and go get cardboard if you're gonna do crap like that. Did you ever you had a Wii? I think you were the only one of us yeah, that had a, Wii. had a Wii. Did you ever yeah, buy Wii. the peripherals like the like for the tennis racket and uh, all that stuff for Wii Sports? That was basically just no ch- chunks of plastic. The only thing that I bought and it's because it came with the game was I bought Cabela's Big Game Hunter and it came with the rifle attachment thing. I got you. Um, but I never used it. <laughs> <laughs> I just I'd use it reg- like I used regular controls for it. Which like I mean I don't know. I would never add cuz the Wii remotes were already I was so they were so prone to being like let go and like fly into the TV. Why would you add something onto something that's going to be thrown? Like if you add the tennis racket part to it, you just have a whole nother 6 inches of something you could hit with, you know? Like, yeah. hit something in your house. Like, it's just dangerous. That's <laughs> why so you gotta use those wrist straps. Got, like, a, well, yeah, but, like, nobody's got a room, like, a, just an empty room with a Wii and a TV. Like, it, there's always clutter in someone's house, like, whether it's decoration or furniture or something. Like, as soon as you put the tennis racket attachment, you have increased your odds of hitting something in your home. Like, by just, like, whether you let go and hit something or if you just, you're swinging wildly and you just knock something off and and stuff like that. But I did have friends when I was playing on the Wii where, uh, when I was playing Call of Duty on the Wii, because I'm I'm an MLG gamer, uh, boy. (laughs) And uh, they would use the zapper, which is, like, the the gun holder, kind of like the thing I had for the Cabela's Big Game Hunter. And they would play Call of Duty with that. And I'm just like, mm, I don't I don't I see the... I could sit back in my recliner and use the nunchucks and do just as good. I can't imagine playing Call of Duty on the Wii. Like, it just doesn't... It, if you know. come over to my house one time, I'll do it. Well, I don't know if... I don't know if online still exists for... The, it probably doesn't for Nintendo Wii for <laughs> Call of Duty Black Ops. But, like, I, I was actually, granted, there probably wasn't many people my age playing the Wii Call of Duty. I was actually really good. Like I said, MLG. MLG right here. Yeah. I can barely go get to the, the pros. start menu on the, on the Wii. Oh. The start menu's easy. Like, once you get used to holding it and you can reach your finger everywhere, like, you could do anything. And then you can map out your, your controller cool and stuff. Yeah. That's what I did. But the Labo thing, the Labo thing, it, I could see it because you're trying, like, it's it's kind of like Legos. Because you get this stuff and they all link together and you build stuff. But it's not the quality of Lego, you know? Yeah, like, Lego is a high hard quality hard. toy. I don't think Nintendo is going to make a lot from it. But who knows? Like, somebody will buy it and it'll be worth it. Because, like, they can't put that much money into it for cardboard. <laughs> I think we can say cardboard a lot more to say it is just cardboard and don't buy it. Um, speaking of money issues of buying things, did you hear Shakira is like suspected of tax evasion? Nope. Her hips lied to the government. Yeah. I was going to make a joke like I was going to say her hips might not lie, but her pocketbook does. Well, you got to be quicker than that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was, I was, I was waiting for y'all to respond from the topic change. I did. Sorry. Uh, it's all good. The um. Here's. I don't see how people with a lot of money, like Shakira, is not like brokering. Like she's, she's got some money from, from her records and whatnot. Like when you're that wealthy, how does, how do you just not pay taxes? You have the money. It's not like you're broke or anything. Maybe you were never taught. And they're just waiting for somebody else to do it. Yeah. Hopefully that it'll They weren't taught how to manage their money. I think they're just not taught how to file their taxes. That too. Um, They may... (laughs) 
they might have thought, hey, I'm going to hire this person to do this, and this person, you know, just disappears and takes money, doesn't do anything. That would be awful. I'm sure there's, like, people that do that out there. Oh, yeah. Um, because, like, you'll think you pay, and you're like, yeah, I'm good. You get a call from the government. Hey, you didn't pay. What are you talking about? I, fi- I paid, like, 100 bucks to get this guy to file him for me. Lucas, that's our next That's our next uh, get-rich-quick scheme. We'll say okay. that you'll do people's taxes, and we'll just take their money. Okay. That's fraud. Yeah. I'm aware of what it is, Chris. But if, okay, but if you don't sorry. get caught, you can keep the money. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, another thing on money. How does HQ Trivia get money to keep giving... Twenty like two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars like two times a day. Investors, I don't know. Silicon it's, Valley heard, investors. Yeah, I heard somebody say it was like ISIS or something, but that doesn't make any sense. I, I don't. Why would I, I? don't know why. I like whoever said that one is dumb. I don't think ISIS would fund an app for for Americans. To give them. Money. Now, I've heard the Silicon Valley thing. I've heard the Silicon Valley thing because, like, when you're when you live that in that part of the U.S., you're you're probably pretty rich. And so, like, what's two thousand dollars to you when you have like a billion? Um, but there's a guy at work, and I don't know I don't know if it's plausible or whether he's true or not. But he's like, I bet they get their money from mining Bitcoin off using everybody's phones, like mine mine for the Bitcoin. And I don't know how Bitcoin works. I don't know how mining for cryptocurrency works, but it made me think, you know, your phone lags a whole bunch when you get on. It uses a lot of battery of your phone. Like, it can't be just to to answer questions. There's got to be something else behind there. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's a government ploy. Yeah. A government ploy to what? Though. To hack our phones and steal our information. They already have all our information. Yeah, they already have that. Figure they want more. They want more. They want to know our daily routine, so they're like, whenever we log onto the app and wherever we are, they take note of that. I've still never played this game. You never played HQ Trivia? No. Me and the guys at work. Um, since it comes on at three, we take off at three, and then like uh, we'll play the game and then we go home. So like it's it's a brain trust of three people, and uh, we answer. Like I got to question seven today. That was pro- I think that was the farthest I got today, or farthest I've gotten ever. What's the farthest you got, Chris? You got to like ten, right? Is that the farthest you made? I got to ten once, yeah. Which, after I missed the one today, there was only one other one I didn't know, which made me feel pretty good. That made me feel worse. I mean, I still wouldn't, like, no, what I meant was, like, since I didn't know another one, then there was, like, it was double that I was It's not like, if I'd missed the one, and I knew everything after that one, I would have felt bad. But, like, if there was two that got me, I'm like, alright, I didn't deserve, like, I, I, I couldn't have got it anyways if I had, if I had. Like, if I'd got that, the first one right, I would have still missed the next one. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah, I would have been super mad if if I knew all the other ones but missed the one. Okay, so I have a hypothetical situation. Yeah. So, I like so you these. have to pick two animals and they will defend – or pick two and they're, they will defend you and the rest is coming to kill you. So here's the list of things you can choose from. 50 hawks, 10 crocodiles, 3 grizzly bears, um, 7 water buffalo, 1 person with a gun, 15 wolves, 10,000 rats, 5 gorillas, and 4 lions. You pick 2 to defend you and the rest are coming to kill you. How many crocodiles was it? 10. Crocodiles are trash anyway. You don't want those. Yeah, but like, let's say I'm in the water. Then all the other ones have You're to be in the water, water for me. Get out you of the water. You don't know where I'm done. at. You didn't. You didn't say where I was. The crocodile was defending me. I'm gonna pick the turf that they're strong on, Chris. So I'm picking water. Duh. That's stupid. 
No. No, it's not. Because then all the other things you have can't... to come to you on the on the turf of the crocodile. The only have thing you that seen... has. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ugh. Tell me. I don't know. The only thing that has an advantage is a hawk, and that's because it's got the air. But think like about how many know. rats ten thousand rats is though. Yeah, have yeah, you ever watched wanted? wanted? Yeah, that's true. Wanted had like ten thousand rats blew up a whole freaking compound. Yeah, they had bombs strapped to them though. So <laughs> I'm so picking. You, I'm picking you... gorillas. Uh, I'm picking the gorillas and uh, the maybe the. Maybe oh wait, rats, I get to pick 10, two. I thought I got to pick one. I thought no, you, I pick, got to you get to one. pick two. Well then, crocodiles and rats. The rats form an exterior barrier of the pond that I'm sitting in with the crocodile, and the crocodile have me posted up in the center of the wall. Okay, how are crocodiles and rats going to uh, defend you from fifty hawks? Like I got ten thousand rats. They're hawks, Tyler. I'll throw the rats at the hawks and like. And then the rats will get on top of the hawks and kill the hawks. They'll choke them out. That makes no there sense. you go. You that I makes turned no this whole thing all. around. Like, well, no, you, you said that gorilla. Was... You said gorilla and rats. Yeah, gorilla. Yeah, find a hawk flying, swooping down on gorilla is gonna knock its block off. Like, well, well Lucas, what are you picking? What are you picking? <laughs> what were all the options again? <laughs> 50, like hawks, 50 hawks, 50 hawks, 10 crocodiles, 10 crocodiles, 3 grizzly bears, 3 grizzly bears, yeah, 7 water buffalo, okay. 1 person with a rifle, Look, maybe it's a shotgun, I can't really tell from the picture, 15 wolves, 10,000 uh, rats, 5 gorillas, or 4 lions. The person with a gun's tempting. Does he have unlimited no, ammo? Not. I mean, I'm just going by the picture. He looks like he's just got one shotgun. Mm. It's about a reload time, and a lion can close the gap really quick. Yeah, I think gorilla Here's is a... a good one. I don't, I don't, the rats, I don't, uh, I, I can't see being a factor. Uh, ten, think about how much 10,000 is, though. Yeah, that's a lot, but. What kind of, I mean, unless you're like planning to kill the people or trying to attack you with uh, the plague or something, it's not really going to. And that's a long con too. Yeah, it's not really going to do anything. Uh, so maybe the gorillas and the the hawks. I think I'm taking, I think I'm going for full brute force and going grizzly bear and gorillas. I thought about grizzly bears, but you only get three of them, so I thought that may be. Here's the, here's okay, one maybe thing we're fifteen wolves then. Oh, the, I forgot about the wolves. Wolves are good too. But here's something we're overlooking: the water buffalo are freaking useless. Like they're the only plant eater there. Like, what are they gonna do? Stampede. How many are there again? They're, you know, said, what do you, are when, there? Do, when are gorillas eating meat, Tyler? <laughs> They got freaking fangs, man. They could eat meat if they wanted to. But they don't. They they don't eat it for nourishment. Is what I'm saying. They they eat it to be intimidating. But still, they have the ability to do they it. Eat it to be intimidating. It's because that's something gorillas but, are conscious about. But like, they could they could eat meat if they wanted to. They have the teeth capacity. How do you know that's the only reason that we've not been overrun by apes yet? Is they just haven't got a taste of human flesh? Because, uh, because we are smarter than them. I don't understand the question. Man, you just don't let it. Don't let a gorilla get the taste of human flesh. They're coming for you. But what was the number on the water buffalo again? Seven. So that's useless. Yeah. You can't even get a good stampede with seven water buffalo. They got freaking jit. You want to know how we can test this, though? No. Ultimate Battle Simulator. They have all these animals? I know they have, they might have alligators instead of crocodiles, but they have wolves. I think they have lions. They might not have hawks, but I think they have another bird of prey. 
It might not be exact, but I think we could get real close and get a winner. Now, someone just has to go get get a Steam account, and we can do this. <laughs> do our research. Here's, yeah, Chris has a point about the 10,000 rats, though. That's a lot of rats. Like, How yeah, many it, rats does it take to take down a grizzly bear, though? Right. It's a lot of rats, but... What, what is a rat going to do against a grizzly bear? Like Overrun it? Man. Okay, so what is... Yeah, you get... <laughs> okay, say you I use 500, so, you so use what 500 happens rats per gorilla, or per grizzly bear. You still got... Okay. You still got a... a 9,500 bucks. Not... So God, what you know happens math whenever... Works? The... You said five... You had 10,000 rats, and 500 went to take out the grizzly bear. And there's yeah, three, there's 900... three grizzly bears. Oh, there's three grizzly. I was thinking so about one grizzly yeah. bear. So you have okay. 8,500. So 8,500, yeah. I thought we were talking about one grizzly bear at the moment. No. So you still got 8,500 rats at your disposal. And, like, here's the thing. The hawks will get tired of swooping down and picking up rats. I'm sure. Like, they're going to kill themselves <laughs> by, like, exhaustion, right? And a gorilla will knock its block off, grab it, snatch it right out of the air. They got thumbs. Oh, yeah, you did the rats and the gorillas. I, I was thinking... Yeah, I did the hawks. I did gorillas and hawks. I think I'd do wolves and mice, maybe. No, I'm sticking with crocodiles. If I'm in the water, I'm good. But how are you going to defend against the hawks? Like, that's the thing. I'll go like, under have... water, Lucas. Get a snorkel. You have no aerial defense. What if they start pooping down the snorkel, Kirby, huh? What then? You can blow... You can blow water back out of it to get the poop out. <laughs> it's disgusting. It is really disgusting. You went there. You're... Also, that takes a lot Ow. of freaking aim for him to get a snorkel tube. That's like not even an inch diameter, Lucas. Well, they can land on it. It's just poop down it. But then you just, you gotta shit, you can shake them off. Or you can drag, if they land on it, you grab them and drown them, Lucas. I'm in the water. Boom. <laughs> And have you ever seen a crocodile like sub like come up out from the water like breach and like grab something out of the water? Yeah, but some Chris, not something that's flying. They have those little birds in their mouths. Those things fly, right? I mean, yeah, but whenever they get them, they're they like perched on something. They're they're not currently in the air. I think. I think a crocodile, if it's concentrating, it could, it could breach, okay. and it could take out a hawk to save my life. It would do that. For okay, me so if it knows. You know, a crocodile has all the powers in the crunch, not in the. They can't. They don't have a lot of power when they open their mouth. No, no. What I'm saying is, like when they breach, like they'll have, they can they can swim really so just, fast. So you can just hold their mouth shut and you're done. Yeah, yeah. A, a freaking hawk isn't gonna hold the mouth shut though. You can. You really can. The gorilla could, that's, but what I'm banking on is, say the gorilla grabs the crocodile's mouth, crocodile just goes back to, in the water and pulls it with it, and starts doing the death rolls. You've all not watched enough Animal Planet. Okay, so say Clearly. this, say the, Alec, the crocodile comes up to attack the gorilla, the gorilla grabs its mouth shut, the crocodile has to go back in the water, and the gorilla lets go and stays on land. Then, like, then it's and then it's still equal. I still have the same amount of crocodiles I started out with. Gotcha. Then what's going to kill the gorillas? Listen, it doesn't say that oh, my cro my crocodiles and my uh, rats have to kill everything. It's just got they got to defend me. So I could, they could play the long game, they could play quick game. They're ready. They're ready to take them out. Regardless. You. You're thinking like, it's like, you know, ten, like 10 minutes, everything's got to be dead afterwards. It's not about that. It's about how long can I stay alive? Well, I mean, I'm thinking I eventually want to get off this place so I can go back to my life. So yeah, I'm trying to kill everything and be done with it but like okay let's say the gorilla i got there's how many gorilla were there like five uh five five 
let's say I'm in Amazon River, Crocodile Home Turf. Also, Gorilla, I think they're from the Amazon, right? Mostly Are from there Africa, gorilla and yeah. mostly from Africa? There's crocodile in Africa. Um, so African jungle with a river where my crocodile's hanging out. All the gorillas are probably on one side of the river. So all my crocodiles have to do is keep them on that side, and I can walk away. And those, I'm leaving those gorillas. Okay. So can't gorillas you make tools and stuff like that? No, I don't think yeah. so. That's all. Have like you ever watched them? No, have you ever watched them like crack a coconut with a rock and like make like hammers and all that stuff? I've never seen them make a hammer. I've seen them. I like, mean, it's use not like a though. hammer or anything, but like they use it as a hammer kind of thing. I don't know. Here's something for you, Lucas. Really care. What are you gonna like? You picked hawks and wolves, right? No, Did gorillas. Pick... Gorillas and hawks. Gorillas? Gorillas and hawks? Fifteen wolves could take down at least... I'm thinking fifteen wolves could take down two gorillas. I'm saying three grizzly bears can take out two. Okay, so and here you go. Probably four lions could take out the last one. Gorillas go up in the trees and starts throwing crap at people. That's all I'm saying. There you go. I don't know. No? Then you, like, you just going to stay in that tree for forever? Are you going to stay in the water I forever? <laughs> no, I told you I was going to cross the river, Lucas. What happened to your snorkel? That's you don't get a snorkel. Hawks don't die first. I can make you a snorkel in if on I'm your out own, in the woods. No, I can make the hypothetical, you're... you're this this sounds like you. What's the game? Uh, that like it's like I met the makers of Cards Against Humanities, and uh, or Cards Against Humanity, and like you have to pick two. Like you have a hand, and you pick two things, and like fight somebody else, and like talk uh, about it. Is fight. it exploding? No, is it? It might be super fight. I thought it was like exploding kittens or something. No, that's not exploding kittens. What's exploding kittens? Exploding kittens, you have cards and you draw from the center deck. If you draw up the exploding kitten, you lose. Unless you have a card. That's it? That's that... the only game mechanic? That's not the only game mechanic. There's like switches and tricks and traps and all that stuff that plays into it. But, I mean, that's the... If you draw the exploding kitten, you lose. That's that's the game mechanic kind of thing. Gotcha. This also reminds me of that scene in Other Guys where, uh, like... The shark versus Mark Wahlberg. tiger or whatever. No, no, it's tuna. It's tuna versus lion or something. Or maybe it's tiger. But, like, Mark Wahlberg is like, I, I would kill you in the wild. Even if we weren't in the same food chain. Like, even if we weren't in the same area. Like, say you were a tuna and I was a, and I was a tiger or whatever feline animal, carnivorous animal he chose. But I would go and kill you. I, I hate you that much. And then, like, Will Ferrell turns it on, like, oh, you coming out on my turf? I got a whole school of tuna. You know, you could probably take one, but 50? No. No, I win that fight every time. <laughs> that, that seems that's hilarious. What, that's, that's, my, that's my rat logic. That's your rat logic? Which, yeah, 10,000 is a butt ton. Like, I can't, I can't fathom 10,000... Rats. Like how much? How how many people does Commonwealth or Kroger Field hold? Is it close to ten thousand? Lord, it's more no, than it's that. Part... Commonwealth. It's more than that. Yeah, yeah it's a lot more than that. It's probably. Hmm. It's probably closer yeah. to sixty, right? Yeah, I'd say you probably pack about sixty in there. Hmm. I'm trying to fathom what ten, how many rats that is. It's one okay. more than 9,999. Yeah. It's true. You're right. You're right out there. <sighs> but, like, Chris is right. If it takes 500 to, like, take out a gorilla, you still have, like, you still have, so that's 2,500 rats that you need, yeah. so you still have 7,500 rats but, left. Okay. But They're the like thing your is... pawns. You're just, like... 
to kill them, like, for, especially, like, grizzly bear. All it does is have to roll on the ground. And they're dead. We're also thinking about if these things were sentient, too, kind of, like, that they knew what their objective was. Yeah. The yeah, you the, the, the dudes on your team know the objective. Yeah. You can make a game it's, plan. With them. It's not like Call that. of Duty. <laughs> We're comparing game animals fighting the college. All right, guys, protect me. I have the objective. I am the objective. But really, the the rats are just like your waste, and you're like, all right, I don't really care about you, but you care about me. Like that's what you're telling them. Or you're like, are you gonna give them the amped up talk? You can do this. We all rely on you. Your numbers are many. You can do great things. Like what's your what's your pre-game talk? Um, I gotta think about that. I gotta get them fired up. Yeah, like, cause I feel like I feel like a crocodile doesn't really care. Like I feel it's like this is something I have to do. I'm not really gonna do it. Like you know, like it's like. Mm. Why does the crocodile it's like it's care, do but the rats don't? No, I'm saying the rock crocodile doesn't really care. I, like, it has better things to do, but it's going to because, like, that's its objective for today. Like, you can't get it amped up. It's just going to kill things because it likes to kill things. The rats, they're insignificant, Lucas. You have to pump them up or they're not going to do anything. I gotcha. They have to get, like... you Because they, they think they're already losing. They're like, man, we're tiny. We're the smallest things in this fight. Why'd you pick us? You go, I picked you... Because you can do it all. You can burrow. You can scratch. You can bite. You can get their eyes. You can claw their eyes out. You got 10,000 of you. Go forth and kill. Like That's what I'm saying. The crocodile's like, hey, circle up, post up. Just keep me in the center of the pond. And they're like, all right, I can do that. I had assumed that you would start out on an open field, but, you know, whatever. Well, if I'm getting to pick my animals, I should get to pick my ecosystem. The ecosystem wasn't a part of the, the premise. Well, the, certain animals are, are are built for different things. Tough luck. I, don't, I think that you get to choose the battlefield. Or at least the battlefield has, like, a pond. Granted, I have to run for it. But like, I should still have the option. Because, like, crocodiles suck on, on land. Also, Lucas says he's climbing up trees with gorillas. Well, if there's no freaking trees if we're in open field. I said that because you were saying you are going to hide in the water. <laughs> Just turn, turn your argument on you. On, on top of it. What? No, you didn't. No, you did You were saying you were going to hide in the water. I said I was going to hide in the trees. So we get to pick our ecosystem. Okay. A field can have trees in it, but whatever. No, a field is it's flat and free of obstructions. You ain't got no trees in cornfields or hay fields. I said a field, not a cornfield. But like, yeah, like the like when you say field, it, I'm pretty sure the definition is like large open area. I'm gonna look this up. Field definition. An area of open land, especially one planted with crops or pasture, typically bounded by hedges or fences. Okay, so yeah, fine. A, in that case, I'm picking, I'll probably pick the wolves and the mice. Because I have 15 wolves, they could they could do a lot of damage, and, and the 10,000 rats could do some damage. The hawks still, you still got to worry about, but I think like oh. the wolves will jump up and grab them as they swoop down. If I have to do open field, I'm still taking. Like, I'm going all. I'm going all power. You said ten thousand rats and gorillas. That's power in my mind. <laughs> what says power? The gorillas or the rats? Both, in different ways. What's the power, power of the rats? Numbers. The num numbers. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. I'm so well, but water buffalo are freaking useless. The guy with the gun would be useless too, I would think. I mean, Probably. is he a good shot? Is he a bad shot? Who knows? He only has like one clip. You got to think about this stuff, man. You got to survive. Is the guy? Is the guy? Uh, Liam Neeson from Gray, where he killed all the wolves with just like brass knuckles he made out of uh, bottles. Like, that guy could do some damage with a shotgun. He made claws out of the bottles. Yeah, what? I mean, he punched with them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I tweeted this, but I haven't officially said it on the podcast. We have press credentials for the Lexington Comic Con. So, you guys excited for that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you don't seem too excited. That would probably be an astute observation. Man, this year's going to be big. It's like on Rep Arena floor. It's on the floor of Rep Arena. It'll be awesome. I've seen announcements. Some pretty decent announcements. Chuck Norris is going to be there. Oh. They do have <laughs> I thought a he was dead. Of... You thought Chuck Norris was dead? You can't kill Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. So he's going to die eventually. I mean, yeah, he will, and it'll be a very sad day. But that man will live a long time. He'll die on his own terms. That's Walker, Texas Ranger you're talking about. He does his own stunts. So does Jackie Chan. Yeah, but when... But did Jackie Chan defend himself from three guys that tried to jump him on his way home from set? He break their legs and then called the cops and be like, "Hey, these guys are here. You can come pick them up." Apparently, I don't think anybody's tried to attack Jackie Chan. Three guys tried to they'd jump. They'd be stupid. But they'd be stupid to attack Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris could beat up. He's Jackie like eighty. You could. I could take him now. Whoa! Oh, no. Whoa! Whoa! Lucas, are you hearing this? He hasn't done a Bowflex commercial in a while, so I don't know. I don't know what kind of shape he's in. <laughs> he's everlasting chiseled. That's Chuck Norris. Chris, I don't think you could take Willie Nelson. And he only has one black I could take, belt. I, I could take Willie Nelson. Nah, you couldn't even take Willie Nelson, bro. Yeah, for sure. No. Are you Whatever. taking 10,000 rats or crocodiles into that fight? I'm taking the rats. He's getting swarmed. He's getting swarmed by your rats? Willie swarmed, Nelson's yeah. like... <laughs> if he, he sees 10,000 rats that are like obeying you. Man, I am so stinking hot. He's <laughs> 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 like, I gotta lay off. Whew. But like this is your first Comic Con ever, right? You didn't you didn't attend one. I know it's your first. What I'm going. Right if, yeah, we got three passes, bro. Oh crap! You said you would go. We have I, video. I didn't evidence. even check the calendar. It's March 9th through the 11th. Okay, let's see. Off work, off work, off. I'm working that weekend. It's a likely story. Okay, right, we'll get, we'll take. Some I work else. on. I'm working on the 27th, which is day after tomorrow. That means I'm off on the 3rd of February. That means I work on the 10th, off on the 17th, work on the 24th, off on the 3rd, work on the 10th. Boom. Roasted. Whatever, Chris. Got wrecked. I'm. I'm not wrecked. You're kind of wrecked. I, I was no and no I'll just I'll take Greg. Greg wants to go. Well, he's more than welcome to go. Yeah, because I, I said he could. And I don't have. I don't have the. I've got my vacation time lined up elsewhere now. So. Yeah, RTX baby. Yep. But like, the Comic Cons are pretty fun. Granted, since our first one, Cincinnati was the best so far. I, I don't know if if uh, Lexington's will trump it or not, but I hope it does. Like, cause that'd be awesome if it could trump Cincinnati's. 
That'd be a good that'd be a good con, right, Lucas? Yeah, I really enjoyed Cincinnati. Louisville was a letdown. I thought Louisville's was going to be good, and then it wasn't. Which we did make some good contacts with the Gaming and Chill podcast. Yeah, yeah, no, they were. You going to cosplay cool this time, Lucas? Heck no. <laughs> How much money would I have to pay you to cosplay for Lexington Comic Con? Well, it depends on uh, as what. So I'd get to choose what you'd cosplay as. Well, I mean, it would depend on what it is. I'm not gonna walk around like shirtless or in a skirt or something. What if it's like, let's okay, we'll go, we'll go easy pick, Batman. You gotta dress up as Batman. How much do I have to pay you to go as Batman? Um, like full suit Batman, or am I getting full off suit easy? Batman? Uh, well, like one that you could buy at Walmart or something, because you're not gonna call, like, you're not gonna buy like make your own. Oh yeah, I know. Uh, honestly, not much. <laughs> 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 it really wouldn't it, buy the costume and all the stuff that I need to go with it, and and uh, you would wear it. Yeah, I'm really tempted to do this now. <laughs> Because, like, you're usually the guy that holds the camera. I'd be like, don't don't worry about my, my cameraman. He's a big Batman fan. <laughs> Cause, I mean, like, if I was just wearing it to a place that nobody else was wearing a costume, then I would be a little more hesitant. But there's going to be so many people already doing it. And especially if I have a mask on, then, like, I could care less. Then nobody knows who you are. <laughs> yeah. What's the craziest thing you would do if you were wearing a mask? Like, nobody could tell who you were. Stab somebody. <laughs> Whoa! <that is> so <laughs> <laughs> Not really. No, that's a joke. Uh... God. <laughs> Gosh, I wasn't expecting that answer. That caught me off guard. I know. That's what I said. I, the craziest thing I would do is like yell something really like embarrassing or something. Like uh, you, you remember do that without a mask? Yeah, that's true. I did that on one of the odds where we're leaving Rep Arena after a UK game one time. I have uh, to poop. I have to poop and I start running towards the vehicle. Well, Was that, it Luke that got me the, on that? Yeah, and we started the catch chant in uh, the Mexican restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> We we just started. Luke started. The, Luke is crazy too. Yeah. The the I have to poop was hilarious because like you guys said there was people like, behind you like. <laughs> I sprinted. I sprinted at least a hundred. Oh, well, as far as I could. I'm not gonna say a hundred yards because it probably was not a hundred yards because I was not in the best shape at the time. No, but like we had just ate like an. We, we, That's was that the game we went to Loudon's beforehand? Yeah, we went to Loudon Square Buffet and ate till we hurt and stood in the eruption zone, which is the student section at the UK game, and like almost vomit. I almost just from. That's great. That Thanks for that game. Uh, let's just say it was a very stinky student section that day. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was rough. <laughs> Which, in all honesty, I actually did have to poop when I was running from the <laughs> crowd. But I did do some really stupid things with a mask on when I got my uh, oh, my yeah. luchador mask. You wrestled the tree. Yeah, uh, Luke got me on one of the odds. So I went out. We had a spotlight and everything in the yeah. courtyard of our apartment complex. I wonder. I think Luke videoed that. I wonder if we still have the video. He did. Of that. I think he's got it on his computer. We need to get that. Are you not entertained? <laughs> I did the whole gladiator speech. <laughs> oh gosh, Are I forgot about that. Entertained? Man, and then we drive around and I do the pig call on campus. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't I do a lot of stupid things without a mask. I don't care if people can tell who I am. 
I just like so whenever we uh, oh, went gosh, to the good times. Uh, final four or the championship for me game, to that... cosplay so like for me to cosplay like at a convention like we're gonna be there a long time it would have to be something comfortable yeah which like if you do a loose like not a super tight tight Batman costume that could probably be comfortable I'm sure the cape would be cumbersome but I don't think you'd be super uncomfortable I think it could I think it would be okay well <clears throat> if I was gonna do cosplay I wouldn't want to do anything with a cape I don't think I'd want to do anything with a mask all day because then you just got sweaty face the whole time yeah so like you could hmm. I think my go to would just be like uh like not a superhero or anything it would be like a normal dude <laughs> like uh something that would be pretty easy to do like the like uh the dude from drive where it's like easily recognizable and all that but it's just a jacket and like gloves. oh dude you could be the guy from drive and I could be baby driver <laughs> That would be awesome. Two driving movie ones. I'm trying to think. Oh, speaking of driving movies, they found the car from Bullet uh, this week. It was like found in some old garage. I think in Nashville, maybe. I've never heard of that. What is Bullet? You've heard of Bullet? <laughs> it's an old no. Steve McQueen movie. No. Never, never seen it. You guys, you guys don't know classic movies. It's in my Amazon wish list. Now that I heard that, I want to buy that movie and watch it again. But I've been thinking about uh, maybe getting a like, not like us selling shirts, but maybe getting us some shirts to, like where we look official at the yeah. Comic Con, Lucas. Like that, just like with our logo on the front, say "Better Than Static," and we can be like, "Hey, we're from this podcast." And yeah, I've tried is, to. I've actually looked at designing some and stuff, but I'm not, I'm not very artistic. Well, I mean, I got, like, you just put our logo on it. You wouldn't have to yeah. design anything. Yeah, no, I think I I'm going to... Trying to do a little something. Gotcha. I designed a new logo for uh, that podcast network we're a part of now, Crossplay Compatible. I, I made a little something because we didn't have a logo for, for it or anything. And I got bored this week, so I just made one. I liked it a whole lot. It was like... Is that what you Snapchat? You yeah, that's what Snapchat? I Snapchatted you. Yeah, it was, it was really cool. I mean, what i seen of it, it was, only, uh, it was just for like eight seconds, but I thought it was kind of cool. I liked it a whole lot. Like, everybody liked it in the, in the podcast network, so it was really fun. Uh... The only thing that I was a little questionable about is like I used like a, a controller that had an X button, and like some people would just be like dumb and be like, "Oh, what's X play compatible?" When it's like you know when you abbreviate cross and cross country with an X, it's like that. What? Yeah. I do know. That, yeah. Like in cross country, it's usually abbreviated that, it's, X, -C. X country. Yeah. Yes. X country. Yeah. I got you. That's so what people I was going think for it's... with the design. Ah, uh, I gotcha. It's instead of sure I gotcha. you get it? I understand. I understand. I didn't I didn't read the stuff that you had on it. I just looked at the pictures. Gotcha. That'll get you. If you don't read the if you don't read the fine print, that might get yeah. you. But that's another thing, like at the end of the episode there'll probably be another promo. Like at the last end of last episode for another podcast that you might be interested in, so you should definitely listen to the very end of the podcast, even after our second, uh, like our outro music, which is basically the same thing as our intro music. But definitely listen after that because there'll be another cool podcast that'll be have a little promo at the end. Uh, last week's was a uh, Gamer Heads podcast. They're really cool. Uh, I think they're they're based out of South Carolina. I think. Um, but those guys are really fun. Uh, hopefully, hopefully some of the other guys will put because we have this Google Drive where all the other podcasts will put their promos up, and uh, and like 
download someone's each week and put it at the end of their podcast just to try to help each other get more followers because that's what a podcast network does. Get a little exposure. Yeah. Get a little exposure. So, guys, <clears throat> thanks for checking out this week. Um, also, be on, if you're from the Lexington area, be on the lookout for us at Lexington Comic Con. We won't have any big fanfare or anything. We'll just be two guys with a camera <laughs> doing interviews. But check us out. Um, and that is March 9th through the 11th. So, you know, that's that's a really cool show. I've been once um, just as an attendee, and it was really fun. They usually have a lot of celebrity guests. Like I said, this year they have Chuck Norris, who Chris thinks he can fight. Um, I think Jason David Frank is going to be there. There's usually a couple other Power Rangers that are going to be there. There's a lot of WWE people there this year. Um, but yeah, you should, if, if you're curious, you, they have a website, I think it's Lexing, it's LexingtonComicCon.com. Um, big surprise right there. Uh, also, uh, just check us out on social media. We'll have updates and stuff. And, uh, uh, if you are curious of the other podcasts in the podcast network, I usually retweet some of their episodes. So if, uh, if you want to check those out, that'd be great. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at BT static. Uh, if you want to email us about anything, any topics you want to want us to talk about, you can email us at um, our email is btstatic.pod at gmail.com. And um, thank you guys. Hopefully this episode has been better than static. Like, subscribe, and review, please. Yeah. Yeah, Hey, 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 it's Carrington from Real Dudes Podcast, and with me I have some fantastic co-hosts. Guys, why don't you introduce yourselves? This is Andrew, coming to you from Lynchburg, Ohio. This is Cody, coming from you also from Ohio. And this is Kyle, coming to you straight from the armpits of West Virginia. We are an indie gaming podcast. We all share a love for games, um, and you can check out our show on Podbean. Uh, just search for Real Dudes Podcast. You can also find us on iTunes, uh, Google Play, um, it, really any of the podcasting outlets that you like to use. Again, that is Real Dudes Podcast. Uh, be sure to check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, if you love video games, you will love our show. <laughs>